Well, the derivatives are starting to pile up. We've talked about several new rules the past couple days, and we're about to introduce you to another new rule. So really take your time and, you know, just maybe make some flashcards, separate them for yourself so you can keep them straight. So I want to introduce you to a logarithmic differentiation problem today. Now, you might be scratching your head thinking, I feel like I've already did logarithmic differentiation over the past couple days. Well, this example is just a little different. So let's get to the idea here. If I were to take this derivative the way it is, okay, I think you'd recognize right away that we'd probably have to use quotient rule. And obviously inside there we'd have a little bit of chain, but either way it's going to look completely ugly. Now, here's a little trick that we can do. I want you to remember that math is all about balancing. Alright, so off to the side, let's make a little note. We are simply going to take the natural log of both sides. Now, this is legal, of course, because we are doing it to both sides. And again, math is all about balancing each side out. So let's just go ahead and we're going to slap an ln in front of both sides. So I'm going to say it's the ln of y equals the ln of this whole quantity, x minus 2 squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, and again, that's legal because I'm doing it to both sides. Now we're just going to use our ln properties to expand. I have not done a lick of calculus. I'm just using ln properties. So I would say the ln of y equals, um, I can split division by subtraction, and I can take that exponent and bring it down. So I've got 2 ln of x minus 2, and again, these are just your three log properties we've reviewed from Algebra 2. Um, this is really the square root of that junk, so I'm going to bring the 1 half down of the x squared plus 1. Okay, so again, I just applied log properties. We have not done any calculus. So now we're ready to finally take the derivative. And I just want to be clear that we do have implicit differentiation because we have a y and an x here. All right, so as I go through, the natural log of y, of course, is du over u. So my u is x. My derivative of y is dy dx equals, I've got a coefficient of 2. Remember, that's just a coefficient. So now I'll do my du over u for ln. My u is x minus 2. Its derivative is 1 minus, one half is my coefficient, again, ln's, I'm just doing du over u, my u is x squared plus 1, its derivative is 2x. Now, you might be thinking it's ugly, and it's a tad ugly, but that's okay. My goal is obviously to get dy dx by itself, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by y. If I multiply by this side by y, it will kill this, and just remember you have to balance your equation. So I get dy dx equals... All right, and I'm not going to go too crazy cleaning it up. I'm going to say that's 2 over x minus 2 minus, let's see, those 2's will cancel, x over x squared plus 1, and it's all of that times y. Now, here is the one little trick you do want to make sure you catch. We don't want to leave x's and y's in the problem. Remember, the equation started with y equals. If I go back and look here, we know what y is. We need to take what this equation is for y and substitute it into our final answer. So I would say my final answer, dy dx, equals, I've got 2 over x minus 2 minus x over x squared plus 1 times, so again, in place of y, I'm just putting that original function, x minus 2 squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. And there you have it. Now, at this point, you know, perhaps they'll say, find the derivative when x equals 0, and I would just plug my 0 in. We shouldn't have to clean up anything too crazy after that. All right, example 2. And again, I just want to stress why logarithmic differentiation was so useful at this point. If I were to try to take this guy's derivative, clearly I have quotient rule, but I've got a product rule in there, I've got a chain rule here, a chain rule here, and it's just a huge mess. So at this point, let's just try rewriting it with our log properties. So pause it, try it on your own. And if you can rewrite it, then the derivative is very simple. So again, let's just take the ln of both sides, simplify, and uh, see what you get. So pause it, see what you get. All right, so I've just gone through my properties. I'm slapping an ln in front of both sides. So when I take the ln of y, get the ln of y. This is multiplication, so we could split up with addition. The 3 comes down in front. That was one of my log properties, 3 ln of x plus... This junk is to the 1 half, the ln of 4x plus 2, minus 2 ln of x minus 1. So at this point, once you rewrite with those log properties, the derivative is very nice. So I see an ln, so I'm saying du over u. My u is y. 
get dy dx over y equals, 3 is the coefficient, the derivative of the ln of x, of course, is 1 over x, plus 1 half is the coefficient, the derivative of the ln of 4x plus 2, my u is 4x plus 2, my du is 4, minus 2, got my du over u, my u is x minus 1, its derivative is 1. Again, to kill this fraction, I'm just going to multiply, balance it, both sides by y. So I've got dy dx equals, and I can clean this up a little, I've got 3 over x plus, that turns into a 2, 2 over 4x plus 2 minus 2 over x minus 1, and all of that times y. Now remember, I'm not going to leave a y in there. I'm just going to go back and substitute that original y in. So I had x cubed radical 4x plus 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my final answer. Again, not pretty, but those, you know, taking the log of both sides is very useful. All right, so the next little piece I want you to title is variable to a variable, okay? Another specific type of logarithmic differentiation. Now, the first thing I want you to note in there, let's make a little note in our book, is that we do have a variable as our my base and a variable in my exponent, okay? And that's why I'm calling it variable to a variable. We have a variable in the base, and a variable in the exponent. Um, and another little star I want you to put in there, this is not the power rule we talked about earlier on in the year. The power rule was for a number, I'm sorry, a variable to a number. That's when I can use the power rule. Okay, but since this is not a constant in my numerator, it has a variable, I have to use logarithmic differentiation. Now again, the whole point of me doing that is so I can clean up that exponent. So when I slap an ln in front of both sides, I want you to think about your log properties again and what will happen very nicely. Here I obviously just get the ln of y, but when I take the ln of this side, that log property brings this whole exponent down in front. Okay, so that was log property number three there. It takes the exponent, brings it down in front. Now again, we haven't done a lick of calculus. All we have did was apply log properties. Now we're ready to take the derivative. Again, it's implicit. I have y's and x's. So I've got du over u. My u is y. That's dy dx over y equals. If you read this side, it says 2x plus 1 times the ln of x. So I've got a little product rule there. So I've got 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the ln of x plus the ln of x times 2. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to kill that denominator by multiplying both sides by y, because my goal is to solve for dy dx. So I get dy dx equals, I can clean this up just a little, let's say 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 times the ln of x and all of that times y. And just like we did before, we're not going to leave y in the question. We're going to go back and substitute what that original y is. So dy dx equals the 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 ln of x times my original y, which is x to the 2x plus 1. All right, so our last four examples, and please don't cheat yourself, you know, take the time to go through these. I really want to break down the difference between these four. All right, so number one, we have y equals e to the negative 4x. The first thing I see when I read this is this is exponential. So in my head, I'm saying e to the u du. And hopefully that's popping in your head right away. When I see an e to a power, e to the u du. So let's take its derivative. y prime is equal to e to the u, leave it alone, times the du, the derivative of the exponent, so times negative 4. And of course, we pull that negative 4 out front, so negative 4 e to the negative 4x. Okay, so e to the u du. Number two, y equals 4 to the negative 5x. All right, now this rule was very similar to that other one, except the 4 is an a instead of a u. So I'm saying it's a to the u du, and we add that one extra step in, or I should say we multiply that one extra step in, the ln, whoops, the ln of a. I don't know what happened to my ln there a to the u du times the ln of a. All right, so my y prime is 4 to the negative 5x, leave it alone, the derivative of the exponent, so again, very similar to the e rule, 
then times the ln of 4. Number 3, when I see ln already in the problem, I'm saying to myself that's du over u. So in this case, I'm just saying my u is 2x minus 5, and it's du, its derivative is 2. And lastly, in example 4, I'm saying I have a variable to a variable. And the only way to attack that problem is to first clean it up with natural logs. So I'm not going to do any calculus. I'm going to say this is the ln of y equals, when I use the ln here, that exponent comes down in front, 10x squared ln of x. Now I'm ready to do calculus. I'll take its derivative, du over u. My u is y. I get dy, over, dy dx over y equals, if I read this side out loud, it says 10x squared times the ln of x. So I've got product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay. I'll kill the whole fraction there by multiplying by y. So we've got dy dx equals, uh, I can clean that piece up and say that's really 10x plus 20x ln of x, and all of that times the y value, which was x to the 10x squared. Okay, don't forget when I multiply that y value, I'm plugging that original back in. So those are the four main problems we've dealt with. Um, we probably have about, I don't know, five more derivative rules to learn in the next couple of days. So take your time and just, you know, keep them separated. Make some flashcards if you need to. Well, that does it for tonight. We'll have lots of practice tomorrow. Have a great night.